This election really had something substantial about the maturing of democracy. Apart from the incident in PE with the ballot papers and the violence before the election, which of course is significant, the election ran well and was well administered and we can have confidence in that. And I think that's very, very important, certainly from an outsider's point of view and for our own point of view. The uh, election results are interesting in all sorts of different ways because it has to do with demography, it has to do with people's preferences, it has to do a lot with uh, the identity and the shifting identity of South Africans. So a very, very strategic election and we've got to see now how these parties play out their different power bases. The ANC is a major, major legacy brand with tremendous credibility that it retains amongst a very sizable number of South Africans. The DA has tried and is trying to constantly reposition itself and offer an alternative voice under the same kind of mantle in a way. It's encroached on the mantle that the ANC has held hegemonically. And the EFF represents a vibrant new voice of a younger generation that feel largely excluded. The ANC has always really struggled because it's been a movement that became a party, that became a state to compromise in a very complex country where we have capitalism and market systems in the economy and we have state-owned enterprises and we have a developmental state and we have different expectations in different communities, rural, working class, middle class, elites. And it's always any government in power has to try and balance that. And that's been very difficult for the ANC to do ideologically. Um, very difficult. I, I think the ANC doesn't have that much coherence ideologically because it's governing. Whereas the other parties, like the EFF, and all opposition parties can target the existing state, its individuals, its policies, its practices, and always look good by targeting because their primary objective is critique and then making positive suggestions but not having to deliver on them. So that's how opposition works in any democracy. The EFF uh, do face a bit of a dilemma. They've reached a certain ceiling, which may grow, but this election grew and, and what they did achieve was a national footprint in a very well organized and disciplined way. But they face a dilemma. Are they in this for the long haul? In other words, are they really interested in, in long term becoming the government? And of course where they were disappointed this time is that I'm sure they hoped to run certain councils to demonstrate their connectedness to communities, their ability to deliver to the underclass and to govern. And they've missed that. So they now face the dilemma of do they remain in opposition, putting pressure on, putting the kind of policy points they wish to, or do they go into partnership and hope in the par any partnership, either with the DA or the ANC, to partner in a strategic way to get their agenda implemented sooner rather than later. And I think that is a, a very central dilemma. The other issue for them, of course, is funding. Um, the, the more councillors they have, the more able that they are to uh, engage with people who are there full-time, the less they're reliant on part-timers, and none of us really know who's funding the EFF, but this is an expensive game, as we saw from the ANC statements, about a billion rand for this election. For companies, maybe, it's a bit early to tell, and I think in the next month or two we'll see where the lay of the land goes. But I'm quite hopeful that business will take a step uh, back and say, yeah, there, is, there are these thing, confidence-building things which include the selection that we've now got behind us. And of course, we've got all the credit downgrade testing coming. And I think there's a little bit of a bounce back in the business community. South Africa has such deep economic assets, such strong institutions, that I think maybe in the heat of politics, we may not recognize the strategic capabilities of South Africa and its potential.